Hello, I'd like to start by thanking the Stanford GPS Lab and the organizing committee for inviting me to this National Science Foundation workshop. My name is Fadi Saibi. I am co-founder and chief architect at Artemis Networks, the company that's commercializing the PCL technology, which took over 15 years to develop. So we start with the fact that mobile wireless data demand continues to grow at uh, an unabated pace. The Cisco Visual Networking Index forecasts a 47% compound annualized growth rate for wireless global IP traffic. And this growth is expected to continue and possibly accelerate in the decades to come. Now, in a paper, Jeff Zander cites an analysis by Marty Cooper. Uh, most likely, you all know Marty Cooper, who is a pioneer in mobile wireless technology. So, in Marty's analysis, he looked at the capacity growth in the second half of the past century. And he found that over a 45 year period, there was a 1 million fold uh, capacity per unit area increase. And he estimated that there were three factors. First, a 25x factor from more spectrum. Another 25x from higher spectrificity, which comes about with better modulation, better waveforms, better uh, forward error correction, better coding. But the, uh, the lion's share comes from spatial spectrum reuse or densification. Now for the 35 plus years, the uh, cellular architecture has been the foundation for this growth. But despite the recent hype, it has uh, hit upper limits. First, inherently it has inconsistent signal to interference and noise ratio in its coverage area. So inconsistent data rate. And more importantly, it is interference limited, which means that when you reduce the size of cells and put more cells in a given area, you expect to increase capacity, but at some point, the interference nullifies your gain. So we really need a leap beyond the cellular architecture for much higher capacity, greater consistency, and greater reliability. And so that's why we've been working on the cell technology. Now here, what I'm showing at the top is the uh, SINR distribution in the coverage area for an ideal honeycomb layout for cellular. So you can recognize in one cell, there is a sort of volcano shape for the SINR distribution from cell center to cell edge. And though that's why that you have seven users here represented, users one and seven are located close to the cell center and have better data rate than users three and four that are at the cell edge. In addition, all seven users here are in the same cell, so they share the capacity of the same channel. This is why in, in places such as airports, stadiums, venues, everyone gets lower quality of service. Now in comparison for PCL at the bottom, for PCL, uh, PCL system antennas located at the same locations at the, as the cellular base stations, in comparison, all antennas cooperate to create peaks through constructive interference, peaks of SINR at the precise location of each user. So they effectively create independent spatial channels so that each user can use the full capacity of the spectrum and those uh, independent channels follow the users as they move around. Note in particular that if someone were to put an antenna in any other location than the exact user locations, all they would measure is scrambled Jewish waveforms and nowhere close to the actual user uh, waveforms. Now, if we compare cellular and PCL densification, there is a paper by Jeff Andrews, which uses stochastic geometry to model the densification of, uh, of cellular systems. And he found that cellular spectral efficiency per unit area decreases at densities higher than 30 cells per kilometer squared because it is limited by interference. In comparison with the PCL system, the spectral efficiency increases with any density because we exploit interference. So denser radios result in more capacity. So it is illustrated on the graph on the right here, which shows spectral efficiency in a coverage, certain coverage area. So first, as a reference, we have data from a T-Mobile FCC filing that show the spectral efficiency for one cell in the case of 4G at 2.5 bits per second per hertz and a mere 50% increase to 3.8 bits per second per hertz for 5G. Now we're in the process of deploying in a, uh, in a stadium with a coverage area of 91,000 square feet 
which is already fitted with an eight cell cellular radio access network. And uh, don't be fooled by the uh, low number, eight cell number. It really requires equipment that fills an entire room. So it's a DAS system. And we could measure by side by side using hundreds of phones in the coverage area. And we measured close to eight bits per second per hertz for the eight cell cellular radio access network. In comparison with a 56 radio P cell radio access network, we get more than 100 bits per second per hertz. Now, densification and uh, high spectral efficiency don't happen in the void. You need spectrum. And so we really see the uh, release by the FCC in March 2020 of CBRI spectrum, 150 megahertz from 3.55 gigahertz to 3.7 gigahertz as a true opportunity. It's a turning point. It's really once in a generation opportunity for innovators to directly compete with mobile network operators. All new phones support CBRS, which has been designated both as a 4G band and a 5G band. Now, in terms of implementation, a PCR system is based on a flexible software defined radio architecture, which allows venue owners and stadiums to deploy uh, PCR in, uh, in CBRS as well as other bands. So it is frequency agile. Protocol Agile, it's mostly software running on common of the shelf one u servers, which run both the P cell radio access network software as well as the integrated Evo packet core. So, here represented on the left, you have the P cell servers connected to the broader internet for IP traffic, a communication with the spectrum access system for CBRS, also communication with other networks for roaming in and out of our coverage area. On the other side, the servers communicate with radio, remote radio heads, uh, which we call P-Wave radio heads, and they do so through Ethernet, which fans out using Ethernet switches, power Ethernet switches, which deliver both power and front hole data. Now, in terms of operation, each remote P-Wave radio head transmit and receive wireless waveforms with the footprint represented at the top here with those uh, ellipses with maximum overlap so that through constructive interference they synthesize those special channels. And now I want to put, bring your attention to the fact that the interconnect, the Ethernet interconnect is asynchronous. Each of the remote radio heads, which we call P-waves, have free running oscillators. But despite that, we managed to transmit waveforms, well, wireless waveforms, which arrive at each user locations with the timing precision of a few picoseconds and the relative frequency stability better than 0.01 parts per billion. The system is future-proof, meaning it can support also neutral hosting for mobile network operators, can support uh, 5G NR waveforms as well as higher level protocol uh, layers, and the data capacity increase happens through adding more servers. Just want to mention that the pictures here are from Wikimedia Commons. They are not the pictures of the stadium where we're deploying. Now, to, in summary, p -cell technology can provide better than 100 bits per second per hertz of spectral efficiency in practical deployments, constitute throughput because there are no cell edges. Also, it allows us to densify without limit. It is simple and rapid to deploy at low cost. It is frequency agile and also protocol agile for supporting current waveforms, 4G and 5G NR, as well as future 6G waveforms. I want to conclude by telling you that really the PCI architecture opens up a universe of new applications and research opportunities. So first, it's inherently a 3D topology. And uh, so that sort of uh, links to Christian Stark and his points. Uh, you can actually, with that, do very precise 3D positioning with uh, the high density of such uh, remote radio heads. And uh, I hinted at that also through the precision of the waveforms that we can transmit and receive from our radios. Also, there's inherent physical layer security. I hinted at that in an earlier slide. Also, it can enable ultra high reliability links because in a certain coverage area, if some radios go down, you lose some capacity, but not the coverage entirely. Also, it can enable ultra low latency, high reliability edge services with so services integrated in with our PCR servers in the in the edge for, for instance, mobile, AR, VR, MR. 